I've been reading your book, uh, BLM, The Making of a New Marxist Revolution. Not a lot of people in this day and age associate Black Lives Matter with Marxism. It's almost, you know, some people would say you're not even allowed to make that association. But you have a different story to tell here. Uh, I mean, you put your finger right on it when you said you're not even allowed to make that association. Um, Amazon refused to run our ads for the book. We were informed the book was uh, published September 7th by Encounter Books. And uh, about six days later, we were informed by Amazon that because it was uh, the subject matter of the book was was debated, was highly debated, not debatable, debated. They had they would not run the ads, and we went back to them and said, "This is a book about public policy and public matters, which by nature are highly debated. And if in the in a democracy we cannot debate public issues, then democracy dies." And they reversed themselves. They allowed the uh, the ads to run. Um, and I'm pretty sure that it was the connection of BLM with Marxism. Well, many people ignore the fact that the founders uh, and the people who led the BLM organizations, especially the main organization, the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, are Marxists who were recruited and trained by old communists from an earlier era. Uh, and you're not allowed to make that uh, to, 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 to just assert that fact, to quote them. All I do is quote them in my book. The, uh, you know, Alicia Garza, Patrice Couleur, or Paul Tometi, uh, and, and, and state their, their previous associations and state their goals, what they say they want to do, what their trainers say they want to do, what their funders say they want to do. Um, let me just finish by saying that I think the reason for that is that the slogan and the concept of Black Lives Matter is unimpeachable. It's a fantastic concept. I say Black Lives Matter. I don't even have to say all lives matter. Black Lives Matter to me, African Americans have uniquely suffered in our history. We need to, I, I feel like I need to assert that by saying that Black Lives Matter. But, you, but the concept is very different from the movement, very different from the organizations, very different from the founders. My book is about the organizations and their founders. So the media never talked about how the, the thousands and thousands and thousands of demonstrations and the hundreds of riots that we had in 2020 were organized or promoted by Black Lives Matter, GNF, by the, by the main BLM group. But yet they, they were very much at the center of it. And then what, what we see starting in 2020 is this huge outgrowth, this huge invasion of critical race theory trainings and curriculum in everything, in all aspects of life, in K-12 schools, in the military, in the houses of worship, in your places of work, to the point that Americans today are up in arms about this, figuratively. They just don't want this. They, they have risen in opposition to their children being indoctrinated and having critical race theory implemented in a way that breaks the Civil Rights Act, Title VI and Title VII, and the Constitution, the First Amendment, because what this is is compelled speech. They tell you that racism is systemic in America, that racism is not an individual act, and that white people have privilege and have a benefit from a, a white premium. And, and you have to believe this. It's not just, they don't, they're not teaching you. Some people believe this, and other people believe the opposite. It's, they're teaching you this. They, they're separating people, they're separating students by affinity groups and workers. Again, illegal. Again, a, so a violation of the, of, of the First Amendment, violation of the 14th Amendment, equal protection under the law. The bills that, that Joe Biden is signing, where uh, farmers uh, can get loan assistance but only if they're not white, violates equal protection under the law, and a judge threw it out and said, absolutely not, you cannot, this is unconstitutional. Rightly so. So I, I think that the reason why we have had this huge and sudden invasion of critical race theory in our lives is directly the result of 2020 and the BLM year. As you read, right, you're kind of stunned at how, I guess, successful and effective and, and thought out this whole organizational structure is. It's beyond, I think, what a lot of people imagine. I mean, frankly, for a lot of people, 
these mm. 12,000 protests and, and I think it's 633 riots that you document were kind of a, almost a spontaneous thing, right? They That's how people see it. This right. is the, the way the media sold it, that it's spontaneous. And yet BLM GNF in its 2020 impact report was meticulous in bragging about the fact that they sent out 125 million emails, <laughs> 125 million emails, which had an open rate of 63%. The average open rate for nonprofits is 25%. That they had 25 million people show up at their website in the second half of 2020. That their actions produced at least 1.2 million actions. They don't explain what those actions are. Um, but it's a lot of actions. It's a lot of actions. You don't, you don't think this is just bluster to, to get more funding? Oh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No, I think, no. No, no. I mean, I think that obviously they're very opaque. But if they say they sent, that, they sent out 125 million emails, well, let's at least quote them. <laughs> the media never does. Well, and so, so this is another, you know, interesting question, right? Uh, media, the way the media, we'll call, we'll call, we'll call it the corporate media or the, the legacy media, different ways to describe it, really, um, and frankly, actually all media treat Black Lives Matter very much with kid gloves for some of the reasons we discussed a little bit earlier, but more so in some cases, you've, you've argued running cover for yeah, they're actions. not covering, they're covering for them. Again, BLM is a wonderful slogan and a, and, a, and a lovely concept. You know, red ideas matter would have been a very, a more accurate description, but, uh, but it but wouldn't, have, wouldn't have been as catchy. Um, and I think that that helps sell the social justice narrative of this, mm. that Black Lives Matter is a, a, the media called it a racial reckoning, a, a year of racial reckoning. You Google that and you get hundreds, hundreds of thousands of hits. But you know, when you Google Black Lives Matter, just Google Black Lives Matter, Google doesn't take you to a concept. It doesn't take you to a definition of a concept or an idea. It doesn't take you to a movement, because a movement is, you can't grapple with a movement. What is a movement? It takes you to the organization founded by, by Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, and, and Patrice Colors, Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation. That's the first hit that Google takes you to. It's like the moment uh, in Miracle on 34th Street, when the lawyer wins the case because it shows that the post office has been sending mail to Chris Kringle in prison. So you describe Americans effectively being under a spell. And that's interesting. I mean, I've been reading things that are sort of pointing in this direction, people writing about some kind of mass delusion. You're, you're calling it being under a spell. What does that mean and how does that work exactly? Well, I, people are acting not so much this year as last year as, as, as though they were under a trance. But still you, still, you still have an element of that. Look, we had, for example, Salem in this country in the 1690s. It lasted over a year in which people actually thought they were witches. You know, a couple dozen people were executed, including an old man who was crushed to death but with heavy stones. Others were thrown in the river to see if they would, they, they would float. Um, we have had moments of mass delusion. And I think this is, I think, a trance-like state in that we actually had a period in which the numbers were getting better, much better, in the sense of the proportion of the prison population that was made up by black men. Still we, too high, still out of proportion to the numbers in the population, but it was decreasing, that proportionality was decreasing, which I think is a, a very welcome thing. Mm. The number of people who were being put in prison was also decreasing as a result of the fact that the crime rate was also decreasing. Now we've had the opposite. The FBI just made it uh, official last week that the, the homicide rate, the murder rate, has gone up by 30%. It's the highest increase in the history of the United States. That's an additional 5,000 people murdered and if you look at the fact that about that black Americans make up about 54% of the victims of homicide, that's a lot extra dead black people as a result of, the, of, of, of what happened in 2020. But prior to that, it was all these indicators were improving. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so to, to extrapolate from the harrowing death of George Floyd that everybody saw and nobody came away from watching that video untouched by it, that things were actually getting worse and that we live in an oppressive society, um, that America is a dictatorship. Uh, as, as, as Eric Mann, the trainer, the man who trained uh, Patrice Colors, says, that it's a nonsense. You know, we have problems. America's not perfect. You know, nothing on earth is ever going to be perfect, you know, news break. But to say that we live in an oppressive society, that the superstructure is oppressive, is just not, is to lose contact with reality. And yet this is what people have been saying uh, since 2020.